Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. A'udzu billahi minasy syaithanir rajim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Nahmaduhu wa nusalli wa nusallim ala rasulihi wa mustafahu al-amin. Sayyidina wa nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa hlul 'uqdatam min lisani yafqahu qawli. Ya Allah ya Rahman ya Rahim. Grant rahma and maghfira to our loved ones who passed away. Grant shifa to those who are sick, Ya Allah, among the Muslims. And we ask you, Ya Allah, to bless those who are striving for your sake with their ilmu, with their money, with their health, with their time, with their physical efforts, with their thoughts, with their positions. Whoever, Ya Allah, is furthering the cause of Islam by any means. Da'wah jihad, politics, economy, finance, education, culture, by any means, grant them rahmah and barakah in dunya and akhir. Ya Allah, protect us, protect our progeny, and guide us and help us wherever we go. Amin. Alhamdulillah. Um, we continue, inshallah, with our very good book, Men and Women Around the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This book that is really helping us, inshallah, to become better Muslims because we have examples, human beings like us, some of them were misguided, were kafir, and then became Muslims, Sahaba. Some of them were born Muslims, but they faced many challenges also. Men, women, rich, poor. Some of them became politicians, top politicians, not any politician. Did they change? And when they became politicians or leaders, do, did they use that leadership for them or for Allah's sake? Knowing that one day they will die. Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, Ali, may Allah be pleased with them. How patient were their wives? with them because of the load, the responsibility that they carried, etc. So inshallah, we continue with Sahabi number 20 in this book. His name is Amr ibn al-Jamuh, radiyallahu anhu. Ah, sorry, we did Amr ibn al-Jamuh, we did Abu Dujana, Today, inshallah, we said we will do the first ambassador of Islam, Mus'ab ibn Umayr, radiyallahu anhu, the effective caller and the patient mujahid. He died very young. The youngest uh, ambassador, the first and the youngest ambassador of Islam. Very young. When he became Muslim, he was 17. Allahu Akbar, we'll see. So these examples, if your children don't hear about them, they will think Islam is very difficult to achieve. And this is the problem. And there is deliberate. Um, Adam, please silence your mic. Oh, sorry. Mute, mute, mute. thank you. Uh, uh, there is a deliberate, do you know, in, in Islam, in our Muslim countries, the Western powers give, give commands to our leaders. We don't want these things. Like what? This, this book. I challenge if they can teach it to our youth. In schools, I challenge. Anything you want, I will give you. Whatever I have, I will give it to you. You know why? Because the West is all based and on fake heroes. Look how much money Hollywood, for example, spends on a character like Miss America, uh, Captain America, uh, Wonder Woman, uh, Superman, Ant-Man, Spider-Man, Batman. They have to, and they keep one and two and 100, no problem. They don't want the youth to think of a real hero that was human like you and me, that was walking on the earth. 
So a hero must have extra powers that others don't have. While it is not true in Islam, the heroes can be just like you and me, provided they have Iman. Once they have Iman, then they have the power. So they don't want. So our youth will not hear about Mus'ab bin Umar, but they will hear about Ronaldo, about Brad Pitt. Our girls will hear about a prostitute who sells her body on the, in every time she comes to sing. But they will not hear about Asma and Aisha. They will not. And if they hear it from Charama like this, or their mothers or fathers, I challenge if they're going to study like this in all the schools. And I'm talking about daycare huh? and up. This is why they can't think Islamically. Their heroes are always Westerners. I know Malays who know everything about the Queen of England, but ask them about Umm al Mu'minin Khadija, anha. they just know she was the wife of the Prophet. What did she do? Who is she? When did she become Muslim? How did she marry the Prophet? Things like that. The interest. So we have to create the interest. You got it or not? So if you want to Islamize finance, and so call the bank isla it's not going to work unless you have the generation this is what the prophet Hassan did when the prophet Hassan didn't he didn't say islamize this or islamize he just educated people and people did everything after him may allah help me and you to do the same but because the road is quite long and tough people don't like it because you change yourself. And it's not easy to change yourself and maintain it. This is why there is pahala. Maintenance is more than, you know, when, when you buy a house, you should think about maintenance. You want to buy a car, very good. Did you think about the maintenance? The car looks good and beautiful. But do you know the maintenance of this car? Mm, no, Sheikh, I just thought about driving it. You know how much it costs you to maintain? Like, like oil change. Service, service, what we call service. The tire, do you know when you want to change this tire, how much? And both cars take you to the same destination. Mm. You see? Same house, big house. Do you know how much you need to maintain it versus a small house? And you are aging, you are not getting your young sisters. So who will maintain that? Uh, many things you have to think about. So when Allah gives us Islam, we need to think about how to maintain it. This is why there is Jumu'ah, Salat and Khutbah every week. Everybody, rich and poor, must go to maintain the faith. You think shaitan is playing games with us? You think shaitan takes vacation? Uh, Shaitan has a mission. He wants to take every son and daughter of Bani, of Adam to Jahannam with him. He's focused, may Allah curse him. Very focused. Bismillah. Okay. Yallah. Who is Mus'ab ibn Umair? And a huge test Allah gave him, sisters. His mom. His mom was against him. Do you know how difficult when your mother is against you? I don't know. What's the name of his mom? Maybe, maybe the, the book will mention. I don't know. I don't know. But he had a very evil mother. His father died and left him wealth, a lot of wealth. His mom refused to give him his share just because he became Muslim. Mus'ab ibn Umayr, radiallahu anhu. Yalla, let's start with Sister Hamida. Bismillah. Rather, the 
everything of the right to the is for our one, the Lord of the world, that is the one of us. Start with the mind, the time of the human order. Who was he? He is the man with the mind, the ability enough, the leader of the Messiah, the forerunner, Al Badi, Al Qurayshi, entered the Port of Allah, Sultan Hassan of Allah, in the house of Al Aqsa, and fulfilled the baptism of Islam, but he regularly when the politicians discovered his secret, they prevented him from defending the temple of Allah in Jerusalem until he migrated to Abyssinia along with some other people who settled in him in the first region. Also participated in the second region. Prior to his acceptance of Islam, Muslim enjoyed a background of comfort and luxury. After accepting Islam, he renounced the world and had to in turn here and feel owing to the importance of his responsibility. Ali bin Abdul narrated, when we were sitting with our interviews in the mosque, an update of mine came to us, wearing only a cloak, fresh with fur. Allah's messenger son of Prophet comes forth with him, he wept, remembering his promise of work and information at that time. He then said, How will it be fit to the Goes out in the morning wearing a mantle and goes out in the evening wearing another. And one dish is placed before him and another remains. And to cover your houses as the Kaaba is covered, on this putting the Christ among you, Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, shall then be back to the Kaaba tree, having leisure for worship and possess with all this, all this point. He said, and his bones are better today than he then will be at that. Ah, let's understand this part. Allah chooses among us those who do da'wah for him. Allah, like he chooses uh, special angels among his angels, like Jibreel, alayhi salam. Allah selected Jibreel to be the best and to be the communication between him and the Anbiya. Allah also chose among humans prophets and among prophets rusul messengers and among the messengers the best of them Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he also chooses among us people who do da'wah we are not all made to 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 be like daily teaching not not everybody can do that Allah chooses okay among the people Allah chose for his da'wah Mus'ab bin Umar he was so focused on da'wah. He was not just Muslim. He was helping others turn Muslim. You see the difference? Most of us, alhamdulillah, Muslim. And we want to become better Muslims, right? Which is good. But how many of us are doing da'wah? Really like going out of their way from their money, from their time, from their health, from their books, whatever Allah gave them. Share and help. Very few. Because Allah selects. Allah gives you chances to say you want to join, join. So may Allah make me and you, all of you here, inshallah, hadirin and hadirat and zooming and zoomat, among those who are selected to do da'wah. Sheikh, can I do da'wah? I, I don't have ilmu. Can I do da'wah some other way? Yes, sister. If you just get rid of half of your clothes, you can make one or two kampongs in Africa Muslim. If you just sell some of your old clothes, I mean it. I'm not joking. Sheikh, I didn't know that 50 ringgit can feed one family of six Rohingyas per week. 50 ringgit we are just throwing in coffee shop. We walk in to drink coffee shop already 50 something. Ah, a coffee shop, not a restaurant. A family of six people, Rohingya, in Bangladesh can survive on that 50 ringgit for one week. They eat morning and after and night. Six. Allahu Akbar. You see? So what I'm saying is just we are not understanding our value. We have a lot and we can do a lot, inshallah. So he was among those people who 
his father raised him very wealthy. He was the only son, and his father was a billionaire, more than Tansri. But his father died. When his father died, he started really liking to, to, to hear the Prophet So he used to go and listen to him. But he didn't uh, become Muslim early. I mean, in the, immediately. So he wanted to think. One day he decided to become Muslim. So the Kuffar started persecuting him, including his mom, we will see. And they prevented him from joining the Prophet school. He had a school, you know, the Prophet had school. Do you know that? House like this, where he teaches. Darul Arqam, Ibn Abil Arqam, radiallahu an. Al Arqam and his wife. Hold on. Hold on. Somebody delivering something. Not pizza. Hold on. Assalamu alaikum. Big board, mashallah. Delivery. Okay. Board for the Institute, inshallah. Institute of Quran and Sunnah Studies. May Allah make you and me among the pioneers, inshallah. Okay. You may say, did Sheikh change his glasses? No. When I went to the sun, my glasses changed. And then they will become whiter. Don't worry about it. Okay, Bismillah. We were saying that Musab grew up in affluence and luxury. So among the Sahaba, there were those who were very, very, very rich. And among the Sahaba, there were those who have never eaten warm dinner. Something warm. Meaning no luxury. So you need, you need to know that because you cannot say, well, Sheikh, those people were good because no, you can be, you can be a queen, princess, and become very, very good Muslima. 
You cannot blame luxury. You know, say, Sheikh, I grew up with a golden spoon in my mouth. No, many Sahaba were like that. And many Sahaba grew up with a very tough childhood. Not only tough childhood, they even died in a tough, from birth to death, tough, tough until they died. So no one can say, blame it on social condition. Whether you lived in a very luxurious life or in a very terrible life, you still have to submit to Allah. Huh. So we have here a very good example of a great man, may Allah reward him, whose mom will not even give him his, share, his rights. His rights. His father left him this money. His shoes used to come from Yemen. Yemen was known like Italy of today. The best shoes in the world are made in Italy. You need to know this. The best perfume used to come from India, rude and this. And the best silk used to come from China. That's his clothes. When he used to pass, all the girls of Mecca come out to the windows and start looking at him. And some of them fainting. Ping sang. Ping sang, whatever. Pisang. I didn't say pisang, so it's good. <laughs> pisang. The women will just start throwing their handkerchiefs. Ah, they were crazy about him. He was handsome and good looking, and of course, his father was very, very rich. So all girls dreamed of him marrying them. Yet he will he will leave all that for Allah's sake. Allahu Akbar. Let's see what made him like that. Let's see. Oh, let me explain the hadith. The la sorry, that the last hadith, Ali bin Abi Talib radiallahu anhu narrated that when we were sitting with uh, Rasulullah sallallahu sallam in the masjid, Musa bin Umair came to us wearing only a clock. What he was wearing in Medina. Mus'ab walked in. When the Prophet saw him wearing that type of cloth, he cried because he knows his past. He knows he used to chant three, four, five bajus per day. He was super rich. Now this Sahabi, because he accepted Islam, he's wearing something like, like shepherds. So Rasulullah SAW cried for this man who renounced the dunya because he couldn't he couldn't have he had and his mom took everything away from him you got it or not it's not he doesn't want, uh, he has and he doesn't want to wear no no sahabi was like that whoever had will wear and share the others who didn't have man alhamdulillah they they were not hasad they didn't they were not jealous of their brothers and sisters who had more than them but also the others were taking care of them as much as they could, okay? So he said, one of the Sahaba said, Ya Rasulullah, why are you crying? Is it because, you know, things are going to be uh, rough for us? He said, no, Allah will give you so much after I am gone, look at us. So it's good, he said, no, now you are better. Now, as you are my companions and I'm still alive, you are better, even when you don't have. Because you are better in terms of spirituality, in terms of finance and material world, you don't have. So you are safe because you take nothing with you. Sisters, when we die, do we take anything with us? So why are you so much attached to certain uh, dunya things? You should be attached to Iman, to Taqwa, to Sadaqah, to Zakat, to Qiyamul Layl. That's the thing you take with you. You know, you, your whatever material possessions, it will stay behind you, will, will remain behind. And you know what? Somebody you don't like may get that. That's the, you should have given. 
Maybe some, you, somebody you really don't like may inherit that thing. So you give it away. Delay to Allah. Huh. What I'm saying this month. So the Prophet said, no, the time that is coming, although financially you will be much better than now, but it's not good. Because to the Prophet, وسلم, the criteria of goodness is spirituality, not materialism. You see, for you and me, oh, he's successful. Uh, what do you mean, sister, he's successful? Ah, oh, he's very rich. You see, your, your criteria, your, your scale is material. While to me, a successful person is a person who is very close to Allah. If a man is close to Allah, don't miss him, sister. Marry him if you are not yet married. That's the man you should marry. If a person is just financially, oh, you can go marry and we'll see. He has to be, and if he has both, mashallah, if he's financially successful and Islamically, mashallah, good, alhamdulillah, Allah gave you dunya and akhir. This brings me to the topic we talked yesterday about. Do not reject someone who may come to marry your daughter based on you don't have. He may work and become very successful. Did you forget who you are? Some of you had nothing. You forgot? You forgot you were eating rambutan in the tree and stealing from the neighbor? Ah, you forgot that you used to swim in the banjir, banjir, when the water receipt, you go and swim. And now you have a big swimming pool, clean, you cannot even get in. You see happiness? We were, when we were little, we were happy. Akbir. May Allah forgive us. Yallaha. Now how effective a caller he was to Allah when he used to do da'wah. How good he was. Let's see. Mm. Are you hearing, Sister Hamida? I don't think so, right? Yes, kind of. Okay. Yeah, not, yeah. I know. I can't hear her. Hear her. How can you hear her? But go, good for you because you don't want to come to class. Takmir, only Sister Nazaria is accused, excused because she is from Singapore. Sister Sastina, Sister Ummu Adam, Ummu Haris, Ummu Shazwan, Sister Farah. Appa Mas'ala, my house is your house. And you're coming to study and go. You think you're going to sleep here? I don't let you sleep here. Even if you want, you come seek knowledge and go. Yalla. Yalla. May Allah bless you. And detective Colin, Allah's Messenger, sent his computer after the Hamza used in the first section. Mm. He was sent to teach them Islam and the basic invitation of the Quran. He carried Islam to the people to attend their gathering and to invite them to Islam. A considerable number of people. Sent a message to Allah Muslims together with Muslims together in a circle of Muslims, and his request was granted. So he got the Muslims together at the house of Haisama. Haisama. Mm. Very good. Continue. Continue. Afterwards, he arrived in Makkah. Several Muslims who gave the second flash at Akaba. He stayed in Makkah for a while before he returned to Madinah. The gate of Allah's messenger. Even Sihab related when the people gave the flesh to Allah's messenger at Akaba, they returned to their people to invite them to speak secretly to Islam. When the number of new Muslims continued to grow, they sent Muhammad bin Al Akaba and Rafi bin Malik to Allah's messenger, requesting them to send a man. Him, requesting him. Requesting him to send a man to call the the new Muslims to Islam. The Allah Messenger Salah Muhammad sent Musa to Islam to them and he never ceased calling. He never ceased, he never ceased 
symbolic name and many people said it's not the same such that there was hardly any house left in Medina except that go except that their nobles had become and the sample is Amar bin Yamin who accepted Islam and broke his idol Muslims soon became the strongest group of people in Medina Islam returned power and even some of them turned up and he used to be called to reside very good. When people started hearing of the Prophet ﷺ, da'wah, before we go there, Musa migrated three times. He migrated to Mecca, uh, to Abyssinia twice, Africa twice. Remember the Sahaba went to Africa, to Negus, Najashi? Okay, so twice. Because he was persecuted. He's, even his mom was against him. If your own mom is against you, what do you expect people to do to you? They will eat your own. If your own brother abuses you, what do you expect? If your own mother, family first, supposed to protect you. So that no one takes you for granted. So to, to the sisters and brothers who may have problems with their family. Mus'ab bin Umar is a good example, subhanAllah. Why do you feel bad? Are you better than Mus'ab, radiallahu anhu? When his own mom was against him. How about a brother or sister? They will answer to Allah. So the third hijrah was to Medina. But before he migrated to Medina, he was already going to Medina. Now, why did the Prophet ﷺ send him? There is hikmah. Mus'ab was from Medina. Look, learn from the techniques of da'wah. If someone is from Johor, I will send him to Johor Bahru to represent me because he knows the people better. He knows their mentality. He knows the connections. You understand? That's one. And the Arabs have respect to that. Or they say, where are you from? Oh, my mom is from your side. Oh, and then they open their hearts and minds. And usually more people like that. Most people are like that. Okay? So that, that's one. Number two, Musab was a very good negotiator. Three, his recitation of the Quran was near perfect. Four, he was young. He didn't send a, an old man who cannot even walk. That one needs energy. So he was young, he could meet many people in one day. From this tribe, to this tribe, to this tribe, to this neighborhood, to this neighborhood. So he was very active. So not only he was good physically and mentally, but his recitation of the Quran made a big difference. The Arabs respected the recitation of the Quran because it's their language and they admire the language. So what was he doing? Peace be upon him. May Allah be pleased with him. He used to teach people. In no time, in less than a year, 70 people went to Medina, Mecca for Hajj. Remember before the Prophet ﷺ came to Medina, there was a secret meeting he had in Aqaba with those 70 men, with them two women. Two women attended that meeting and they all gave pledge of allegiance to the Prophet ﷺ. Those 70 men and two women, they came from where? From the barakah of the activities of da'wah of Musa bin Umar, radiallahu anhu. So sisters, think out of the box. Sometimes you cannot change from inside. Go from outside. You understand, Mecca was locked. Locked, closed, closed-minded. So what did Rasulullah do? He started looking for other people. The first people he tried with, Ta'if, as bad as Mecca. Medina, different. And you know why Medina accepted? One of the reasons, they were hurt, like you, like most of you. You wouldn't be in my class if you were not really humbled by a big loss in your life. Either a son, a daughter, a husband, sickness, um, money, something happened to you. That's why you are in my class, which is good, which is good. You got it or not? Beside the Hidayah of Allah, of course, 
We're talking about what happened to you. You are humble. Alhamdulillah. That's why you are in class like this. Yes, yeah, sisters. When I say humble, doesn't mean you are not rich. Some of you, mashallah, takbir. May Allah give you more. But humble, hum, inside, inside you're humble. Hey, some people have nothing but very arrogant. So humility is an attitude. Humbleness is an akhlaq attitude. It's not a condition or a social condition, no. So what I am saying is this, is that Medina people, because they had 40 years of war, they were broken. They needed peace. They were looking for anyone to save them. And they saw the potential in Muhammad when they heard of him and when they met him. When they heard of him, they said, this man can help us. Then when they met him at Aqaba during the Hajj season, the Mushrikeen used to go to do Hajj. So he met them and did da'wah to them. And they said, come to Medina, we will protect you. Come lead us, live with us, we will protect you. He said, okay. Then the Hijra started. Who did the legwork? Who did the preparation for him? Our Sahabi. What's his name? What is the Sahabi we're studying today? Abu Bakr Siddiq, radiallahu anhu, right? Yeah? Hajja Farida said yes. Musa bin Umair, she correct. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Musa, Musa. Yeah. This beautiful name. Give it to your grandson, Mus'ab bin Umayr, Mus'ab bin Ramlan, Mus'ab bin whatever your husband's name, or your son, or your whoever. Mm. Good name, good name. Yeah? Like we saw Amr, Amr ibn Jamuh, radiallahu anhu. Great, Abu Dujana. You remember Abu Dujana? Huh? The man with the red band, the Mujahid. Yeah, very good. You see, if I had money, I would make movies about them, honestly. Do you know how much money I can? Wallahi, you can make a lot of money. You just, you can make a lot of money and spread Islam. Just small movie, one hour, one hour and a half max. A life of one of the sahab. Haba, bit by bit. They have to come to me. I cannot go to them. They need me. I don't need them. You tell her to come to me. Visit me. Tell her to come. I will. I will entertain her. Give her ideas. I don't have a phone number. I mean. If you know people, they should come to the Sheikh. Sheikh shouldn't go to people. You know that. It's okay. All right. Here is the point I'm making. Please, sisters, I count on Allah then on you. You, my students, to spread these ideas. You, if you know some people say, come, why don't you make a movie about one of the Sahaba? Huh? Yes. Why we make a I agree. But she has, it's not about agreeing or not. She has to come and, yes. and meet yes. me and say, okay, Sheikh, I heard you have some ideas. Can I discuss with you? Come, sister, we give you. Then she, as a movie maker, she can make that movie, not me. I can act. I have actress, you know who she? Karina, Takbir. Okay, I'm just saying, whether Sheikh does it or not, you, you go and do these things. I am telling you how to think out of the box. Hmm. So people, I just give the idea, let actors do that because they are trained, they are professional. Not Sheikh, Sheikh will not act, I'm just joking. Sheikh give idea. 
And people take the idea and make a movie out of it. And we all win, pahala from Allah. And those who make money, let them make money, it's okay. To me, as long as Islam is spreading, that's all I want. Inshallah, inshallah, inshallah. So, he made da'wah to 70 plus. When the Prophet ﷺ sent him one more time before the Hijrah, every house in Medina had at least one Muslim. Do you know what does that mean? How effective he was. But I didn't tell you the story that I should have told you earlier. His mom, when she realized he became Muslim during Mecca, she persecuted him. She stopped him and put him in jail. His own mom, she told man, kidnap him and put, to, to torture him so that he doesn't meet his most beloved. Who is his most beloved? Rasulullah. You know, that's one way to punish people is not to let them meet their friends. He was crying, crying, crying until she said, okay, you go. She was so angry with him. Then to pressure him, she stopped eating. Then they told him, your mom has stopped eating and drinking. Go see her, she's dying. When he went and said, Ma, why are you doing this to yourself? She said, people will call you killer of his mother. Why, why did you leave the religion of your forefathers? He said, Ma, please eat. She said, I will not eat until I die. And people will call you killer of his mother. He said, mother, if you have 100 souls and I see every day you lose a soul, I will not, I will not leave Muhammad. But Muhammad is a good man. Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. Sallallahu alayhi wa He left. A <laughs> few hours later, she ate. She broke her fast. Huh? A test. He could have said, no, ma, okay, I don't want, I don't want to, to be called names. He said, Wallahi, mother. Oh, she told him, I will stop you from your wealth. I will not give you your money. He said, do as you wish. And he left. Since then, until he died shaheed. In the battle of Uhud, we will see. In the second battle of Islam. All right, very good. The patient Mujahid. Now he's jihad. He, he remained firm. Yeah, we just saw that surah. That's right. Then we have the fact that his left hand is again water tap and other hand two water to be filled. Then he bent over the flag and picked it up with the thumb of both on the two fingers and his palm was beside him. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa was no more than defended and he made many members pass away before him. Finally, he was hit by a spear which spear through him and he fell. Even some nights before this, Allahu Akbar, stop there. In the battle, in the second battle of Islam, where the prophet was almost killed and there was a rumor, Muhammad was killed, Muhammad was killed. So the Sahaba panicked. The prophet is killed, the prophet is killed. The, the elder brother of Anas, his name is Nadr, another bin Malik, radiallahu anhu, the brother of Anas, shouted and told the Sahaba, then die for what Muhammad died for. 
If Muhammad Sallallahu died, okay, let's all die now. Because uh, what do we do after Muhammad Sallallahu If he's killed, let's all die. So they went back and start fighting. You see how uh, reverse psychology. Usually when you say, okay, he died, oh, give up. Khalas, draw your weapons. No. If Muhammad Sallallahu died, let's all die. Mus'ab was saying something else. Same, but better, which is, he recited verse 144 from Surah Adi Imran, Surah 3. وَمَا مُحَمَّدٌ إِلَّا رَسُولٌ قَدْ خَلَتْ مِنْ قَابِلِهِ الرَّسُولِ أَفَإِمَّا أَوْ قُتِلًا قَلَبْتُمْ عَلَىٰ أَعْقَابِكُمْ وَمَنْ يَنْقَلِبْ عَلَىٰ عَقِبَيْهِ فَلَنْ يَضُرَّ اللَّهَ شَيْئًا وَسَيَجْزِ اللَّهُ الشَّاكِرِينَ Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is messenger of Allah. Many messengers before him died. If he is killed or he dies, you're going to turn away and not follow him anymore. Allah, uh, um, Allah will punish those who turn away and Allah will reward those who are grateful. He was reading this ayahs. Ibn Qami'a, may Allah curse him, one of the strong knight horsemen of Quraysh, cut off his right hand because he was carrying the flag. He went and cut off so that the flag falls. He took the flag with one hand, the other one. So the other one is already severe. Then he came and cut off his left hand. Then he carried the flag with whatever left from his hand. And then he came from the behind and chop him into two with a spear. Spear went inside him. Then he fell. An angel came in his form and carried the flag. So when the Muslims were safe, after the end of the battle, the Prophet Sassim called Mus'ab, Mus'ab, come. That Mus'ab came and said, whispered in the ear of Rasulullah I'm not Mus'ab. Mus'ab is dead. He's shaheed. The Prophet Sassim said, Allahu Akbar. An angel in his, when they went to start looking for the dead, 70, one of them was Mus'ab bin Umay. Two Sahaba, the Prophet cried them so much, his uncle Hamza and Mus'ab. May Allah be pleased with them. Okay, got this story? Let's continue. Ibn Hisham, it was reported that when Mus'ab was killed, Allah messenger from Allah. In this world. Now, when he was killed, sisters, he was so poor that they did not find how to, with what to cover him. Look at me. His cloth, look, look here. When they pull on his head, his feet become uncovered. And the Sunnah, the Prophet said, you must cover Janazah, except one, Janazah. All Janazah from toes to head must be covered. You know that. Must, wajib, except one type of death. Who is he? No. Even Shahid, you cover him. Here, pregnant woman? No. Look at me. When you die and I die, 
you must cover me from my head to my toes. Unless if I die in one condition, you cannot cover my face. You bury me like that. Shahid. Ihram, ihram. If you go to Hajj or Umrah, if you are still wearing your clothes and you die before you remove the clothes of ihram, we cover, we bury you without covering your face. Remember that. Even the shaheed, we cover him. The Prophet said, do not cover the face of those who die in Hajj or in Umrah. Clear? Because they will come when, when they, because the Prophet said so. That's number one reason. Second reason, because the Prophet said that they will come saying, Labbaik Allahumma Labbaik. So how can you, when you, grow, when you resurrect, if you, you die in Hajj or Umrah, you, you'll be saying, Labbaik Allahumma Labbaik. By the way, you will resurrect the same way you die. May Allah give us good things to say. Ameen, Ya Rabbi. Like, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. So you get, you, you, you get up from your grave saying the same thing. If you are singing, Saya cintamu, you get up. Saya cintamu, apa itu? Takbir. You think I don't know? I know. I know some singers of the 90s. I'm quite old. Mm -hmm. The six, uh, 60s, 70s, 80s, I don't know. But 90s, I know. Okay, I'm coming, coming. We didn't finish yet. So, Shaheed must also be covered, right? We said the only person you don't cover the face is, is the person in Ihram. Very good. Mecca or Medin? Uh, Mecca, if he died, Hajj, Hajj or Umrah. Okay. Now, Shaheed must cover. So when they cover his face, his feet are uncovered. When they pull his clothes to his feet, his face is not covered. So the Prophet said, cover his face with his clothes and cover his feet with idkhir. What is idkhir? Branch in the desert, cut, meaning with branches, leaves, but must cover. That's a law. You cannot bury someone uncovered. Remember that, that's a sin. That's a sin on the people who bury someone without covering him or her. Clear? Okay. No, no. On the people. No, well, if a person dies in hospital, he or she were not covered properly. It's us. Why we didn't cover him or her? Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Let's take a break of five minutes and then come back. Take a break. Eat something, sisters, brothers. You, you always eat anyways, because I don't see you. Yalla, salam alaikum.
Assalamu alaikum. Back to Sekolah. I ring the bell. Okay. Yallah. Sister Sastina now. Tell us about Ja'far ibn Abi Talib radiyallahu anhu. Another sahabi who lost both hands. But Yawm al-Qiyamah will come flying. Let's see. Who is he? Assalamu alaikum, Shere. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. His encounter with Najashi in the land of Habasha. It is reported that Umm Salama said, Makkah had become constricted on us and the companion... No. Which, no? Which, which one you are studying? Jafar Abu Talib? In Abu Talib? No? Jafar, yes. Yes, it's not his encounter here really now. Um, yeah, we, we were not hearing you quite well. Oh, I now, see. Let me see. Okay, let me... 23. Sahabi number 23, page 211. Everyone. Oh, 211. Oh, we have not started. I see. Okay. We didn't. Ja oh, I see. Okay. Ja'far bin Abi Talib. He flew with the angels in the heavens. Our guest in this section is the master, the martyr of great repute, the luminary among the Mujahideen, Mujahidun, Abu Abdullah, the son of, our son of the uncle of Allah's messenger, Ja'far bin Abi Talib, the brother of Ali bin Abi Talib. He was older than Ali by 10 years. He participated in the two hijras and also migrated from Abyssinia to Medina. He met the Muslims while they were at Khaybar, just after it was conquered. He stayed in Medina only for a few months when Allah's messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, appointed him to lead the Muslim army to the battle of Mut'a in the region of Karaka, where he was martyred. Allah's Messenger وسلم, was greatly pleased at his arrival and he was extremely saddened at his demise. His virtues. Ali uh, Al-Bara narrated, Allah's Messenger وسلم, said to Ja'far, you resemble me in both in look and character. Abu Huraira narrated, no one under the sky who walks on the earth's surface, aside from the messenger of Allah, was better than Ja'far in his generosity and nobility. Very good. One of the most unknown Sahaba is the older brother of Ali, radiallahu anhu. Ali is to the Prophet as what? Ali, Ali. Son-in-law. He married his daughter, the daughter of the Prophet Fatima. She's married to who? To Sayyidina Ali. Very good. Plus, Ali is the adopted son of the Prophet The Prophet raised him. Like the father of Ali, Abu Talib, raised Prophet Muhammad Okay. Three. Ja'far is 10 years old. Older. 10 years older than Ali. And he has a big history of Islam. But many people don't focus on Ja'far. Ja'far ibn Abi Talib, the brother of Ali ibn Abi Talib. Ja'far, may Allah be pleased with him, has a big history, especially in Abyssinia. When the Sahaba went to the Hijrah, the first two Hijras, there are three Hijras in Islam, in the history of Rasulullah. Two to Africa and one to Medina. Never forget, three Hijras. When the Muslims were persecuted, they didn't stay and accept the status quo. They left to a place where they freely worship Allah. Because again, I want to remind you, sisters, and remind myself, what's the purpose of us being on earth? To eat and drink, eat pizza, and banana. To worship Allah. Monkeys also eat banana. <laughs> and they eat better banana than us. Fresh. And they don't pay money. Look how smart. Takbir. They go, they eat fresh, and they don't pay. And they don't have to have my sejahtera. Did you realize that? They are more free. And people stop to give them food. Nobody stopped to give me food. Wherever I go, what is your service? My sejahtera. Are you vaccinated? Are you ready? Allahu Akbar. Somebody asked me, are you vaccinated? I said, how about you? I said, you show me, I show you. 
He was shocked. I said, what do you think? You also can give me the virus. I said, show it to me. When he was about to shake, show me. I said, okay, I'm kidding. But I gave him a lesson. Why only the customer has to show you? Because I need you and come to, to your shop. You need my money too. Buy. Keep your product. I keep my money. You have to be free, guys. Don't let anyone control you. Who says that you also are vaccinated? Show me. You show me, I show you. Highway. You like me, I like you. You respect me, I respect you. That is Islam. Guys, be careful. Look at Jafar. He is radiallahu anhu, the leader of the Muhajirin. In, he was the Amir. The Prophet وسلم, appointed him as the caretaker of his Muslim brothers and sisters and affairs in exile. He came quite late to Medina because he was waiting for the Prophet to tell him when to join because the road was not safe. Quraysh can intercept them and kill them until there was Sulh al Hudaybiyah. Until there was that peace treaty. Remember the treaty between the Prophet وسلم, and Quraysh? So he told them, you can come. Only when he secured 10 years of peace, the Prophet وسلم, sent a letter to uh, uh, Jafar bin Abi Talib in what is today known Ethiopia and told him to come across the sea with all the Muslims that are with you and bring them to Medina. So when he arrived, it was the conquest of Khaybar against the Jews. Few months later, the Prophet sent him to Mu'ta to fight the Romans. He's sending his cousin. The Prophet was not sending his family to London and Brisbane and New York and Harvard to eat and drink and be safe. He sent them to Jihad. Like every Muslim, honor. You die, you die, Shaheed. You make it, we all are going to die anyway. When you see a leader sending his own cousin to jihad, wouldn't you want to join? Wallahi, I will join. Because the Prophet Sallallahu if he had sons, he would have sent them to jihad. He himself went many times, 29 times. 29 times the Prophet Sallallahu went for jihad. Never forget that. He had one hajj, four umrahs, 29 ghazwa. Battle, he led himself. That is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was a brave man. The Prophet Asim was not like the leaders of today. He was a brave man. He never tell the Sahaba to do something until he does it. So Ja'far now, radiallahu anhu, is coming all the way from Abyssinia. Here it is. Let me show you, since we have. Sister Hamida, kindly there is a stick there at the end of the book shelf. Don't hit me with the stick, eh? just bring it. Like there, there, thank you. Don't hit Hajja Farida, no, Rotan, thank you. Ah, look, look what we, if you, uh, this no from here. This is a Malaysian stick. A friend of mine gave it to me a long time ago. But subhanAllah, I never hit anyone with it. Takbir! <laughs> Sheikh just talk. <laughs> Sheikh is like panda. You know panda? Uh, nice, scary. Nice and scary at the same time. Takbir! <laughs> ah, here. Yeah. Mm. The Sahaba were here. He, they had to cross the sea to Arabia and then travel all the way to Medina. They had to cross the sea and then go up, cross Mecca, or go to Medina. So if they come, they have to pass by, by Mecca. So the Meccans would kill them, catch them and kill them until the Prophet ﷺ had peace treaty. This is why Jafar and the Sahaba who were in Abyssinia did not 
go to Medina first with the, the third hijrah. They already made two hijras. So it, who was leading them? Who was their khatib? Who was teaching them Islam? Ja'far bin Abi Talib, radiallahu anhu. Yeah, he's like some Muslim uh, brothers and sisters in the West. They are safe until we tell them, okay, now you can join us. Migrate one more time. But this time to Medina, not to Mecca. Don't come back to Mecca because Mecca is still kafir. When he arrived, it was already the battle of, of Khaybar against the Jews. But he did not participate because he, he arrived after it. You know what the Prophet ﷺ gave him? He gave him a share. Share of the booties of war. Why? Because he already did hijra. To, he was on his way. If he arrived early, he would have participated in the war. So the Prophet ﷺ gave him a share. And also, because they just arrived, they need something to start their life with. The man migrated all his life in Abyssinia and now migrating newly to Medina. He needs some, is, for example, somebody arrives here to Malaysia. New, he knows nothing. At least we give him 1,000 ringgit. Here is brother, 1,000 ringgit. You buy some errands. I don't know what you need. You know better. When you get a job, inshallah, the second step, we find you a job. But must give something. What do you think that brother, what? That brother or sister, sometimes you forget that. Must give allowance. That allowance, brother, may, may need special thing because he's new. You think somebody just come here, he eats nasi lama. The first time I saw you, pizza and goreng, I was about to go back. Pisang and big pisang. Pisang tandoor. Whatever. Tandoor is huh? I was saying, Allah, it's not my culture. If you fry fruits, Allahu Akbar. Then I saw jackfruit being fried. And I don't know what. That, and I said, Allahu Akbar. I am at the land of the frying people. They fry everything. Then now I am in love with this land. Allahu Akbar. Takbir. Champada, champada. A correction from uh, Ustaza Farida. Takbir. Champada. But all of your fruits look alike anyway. Like uh, Chinese, all of them look alike. Your fruits look alike. All your yellow fruits look alike. Takbir. Yalla, I think I'm hungry. That's why I'm talking a lot about food. Uh, are you with me, sisters, when it comes to Jafar? Jafar was not anybody. He was very important Sahabi. But why we don't know much about him? Because he was stationed in Africa. Oh, I see. Now, as soon as he comes, sisters, brothers, he will go to Jihad. Allahu Akbar. He didn't say, Rasulullah, let me rest. He will go to Jihad and he will die shaheed. His encounter with the Najashi in Africa, the first day he spoke to Najashi, must be taught in the highest universities. Diplomacy how he spoke to a king, how he convinced the king that we are good people. We are not what they're saying. Because Quraysh sent a delegate, delegation to get them back, extradite them. Imagine a citizen runs to Malaysia, persecuted. The country of that guy sent documents to the Malaysian government pressuring them, give us this man. He is a dangerous terrorist. And that man speaks, I'm not terrorist. Your honor, they talk to the government of Malaysia saying, please hear me out, just hear me out. That government is saying I'm terrorist, I am not. Here is what they do to us. They persecute us just because we say la ilaha illallah. 
Then the Malaysian government says, no, we don't give you this type of people. These people, you are wronging them. That's the king. But he knew how to speak. He knew how to convince the king, in this case, the Malaysian government, that we are not what they say. They are just lying. But he was so good in speaking. Okay. Yalla, continue, my sister. His encounter with Najashi in the land of Habasha. It is reported that Um Salama said, Makkah had become constricted on us and the companions of Allah's messenger were tortured and oppressed. Their situation became unbearable and Allah's messenger وسلم, could not do anything to protect them. He was under the protection of his family and his uncle. None of the kind of repression that afflicted his companions touched him. As a result, Allah's messenger وسلم, advised them, there is a king in the land of Habasha and none is wronged under his authority. So move to his land until Allah provides a way out for you. So we headed toward him as a delegation. We arrived there safely and remained in freedom and security, enjoying freedom in the practice of our deen. Mm. In, should I read that? Yeah, yeah, no, no, go ahead, go ahead. In, a, in the narration, she said, when we arrived in the land of Abyssinia, we savored the taste of freedom and security and enjoyed the sweetness of worship undisturbed under the protection of Najashi. When the Quraysh learned of this, they made plans to send emissary to Najashi to secure their extradition. To accomplish this task, they chose two people and armed them with considerable amounts of valuables and much sought after presents made up of some of the most exquisite materials of Mecca for the Nijas and his bishops. With all of these gifts, they sent two men, Abdullah bin Abi Rabia and Amr bin Al-As. They spelled out their tasks and told them, present each bishop with his gifts before he enters the presence of Megdashi in order to seek their favorable disposition toward your case with him. After presenting Najashi with his own gifts, ask him to release the fugitives to you. Ah, what does that mean? Bribery. That is bribery. Give the gifts to every bishop before he meets the Najashi. Quraysh sent a group, two great diplomats, Amr ibn al-As and Abdullah bin Abi Rabia, who became Muslims later on, subhanAllah. But this time they were not Muslims. Give us these people who run away from Mecca. They are citizens of Mecca. They are wanted by the law. What these citizens have done? Oh, they are doing, they are the changing our laws. They are making fun of our gods, which is not true. The Muslims never made, they just said, these are false gods, but they didn't make fun of them. Uh, they follow a man who is creating rebellion. They are therefore rebellious, all lies. Before they talk, they said, give gifts to every bishop before he comes to the king's court yard and give gifts to the king. So he'll be pleased with you. Or at least he will listen to you. So they brought tons of gifts. And when I tell you Arabs give gifts, they give gifts. I'm telling you this. So it was really a lot. So he was impressed and the bishops were impressed. Then they said, bring this man. He asked them a question. Why did you come to my land? So now Ja'far will speak. When he speaks, still doesn't convince the king because the diplomat who came to take, to take them is the friend of the king. Amr ibn al-As had very good friendship with the king of Abyssinia. He wants to take them and he almost succeeded. Had it not been the mercy of Allah, then to the fact that Jafar knew how to speak to a king, very important. Yeah? Some people, Allah gave them very good, sweet tongue. So they better speak. For example, there are ladies, they better speak when they go ask for the hand of a girl, but not another lady. That lady doesn't know how, 
That lady doesn't know how to speak. Let give her, um, she will be good in, in organizing things, but not in speaking. So another lady will say, Minta um, maaf, uh, the bees, you know, are out and the sky is beautiful and the bees are looking for the flowers. Bunga, bunga. And hey, straight to the point, sister, what do you want? Is your daughter available? We have a son for her. But you go. How many, how many hours, you ladies? Oh, banton, banton. What is it? How, how many hours? Six hours? So what, what do you say? You already do. Oh. Oh. Oh, Hajja Farida is, uh, mashallah, acting. I come to pluck the flower. The mother says, which one? We have many flowers. Oh, the middle one. Or the old one. Or I don't know who. Yeah? Mashallah, good, good. But please don't make it too long. Yalla, straight to the point. You think we have time? We don't have time, everybody's busy. Our son is interested in your daughter. Your daughter, we heard you have a girl called Nur Fatima. Not Nur Asmahan, Nur Fatima. Okay, the mothers, we will see, we'll talk, we make istikhara, something like that. Yeah? Don't make it too long, flowers and bees. What is this? You don't make stikhara before marriage wrong. You must, before you even go to the house of someone to ask for her hand. Ya Rab, if these people are good to us and we are good to them, make it happen. Always ask Allah before you do anything. Continue, my sister. She continues. So both men set out on their journey until they arrived at the land of Najashi while we were enjoying our stay under his good gesture. The two emissaries did not leave any of these bishops without presenting him with plush gifts before they ever spoke to Najashi. They would say to each bishop, some foolish youths from our land have sneaked into the land of the king. They abandoned the religion of their people and they did not embrace yours. Rather, they have invented a new religion which is neither known to you, to, no, neither known to us or to you, nor to you. The nobles of our people have sent us to the king regarding them, seeking that they be extradited back to our, their home country. So we wish that you impress upon him to release them to us and not to even speak with them. When they saw the plush gifts presented to them, coupled with the faults they heard about the fugitives, all the bishops responded favorably to the request of the two Quraysh emissaries. And therefore, my sisters, be very careful when you are in authority and people start giving you gifts. They want something. That's why it's absolutely against uh, Islam and against the law for a judge to accept gifts. You know, judges cannot accept gifts. One of the toughest jobs on earth. Do you know all the gifts politician receives supposed to be given public? It has to be public, given back to the public. Let's say Sheikh Zuber becomes prime minister of Algeria. Whatever gift I have, thank you very much, I put it in the museum. So it becomes national property, property of the public. So that nobody says, well, we gave you a very expensive watch. Ah, now because of that watch, you want me to sign a deal or something? Be careful, sisters and brothers. Ah. So when you are in high position, it's not like when you are. And tell people to give you after you are out of the position. Can they still give you? No. They will not give you the same. I swear by Allah. When you are in position, everybody wants to give you. When you are out of position, they don't even pass, say, Salamu Alaikum. They don't know you. So they know you because of that position. Only good friends who truly love you for Allah's sake. They still visit you and they like you because they like you for who you are, not for what you are. 
So judges cannot accept in Islam gifts. So these bishops already heard bad things about the Muslims. And they were gifted. So definitely they're gonna sympathize with Amr ibn al-As, the emissary that is coming from Mecca. Continue, please. Thereafter, they both went to Najashi with their gifts, which he accepted from them. Then they said to him, O king, there is a group of foolish persons from among our youth who have sneaked into your kingdom. They separate themselves from the religion of their people, and they did not embrace yours. They have invented a new religion, which neither we nor you know. The respected leaders of their people, from among their own parents and uncles, and from their own clans, have sent to us to you to request you return them. They know best what trouble they have caused. She continued, there was nothing more hateful to both Abdullah bin Abi Rabi'ah and Amr bin Al-As when then Najashi giving the fugitives the opportunity to speak. Ah. The king, sorry. No, go, 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 go on. The king looked towards his bishops and said, they speak the truth, O king. Their own people know them better and, they, and are better acquainted with what they have done. Send them back so that they themselves might judge them. Ah, you see? You see when you accept gifts, you start sympathizing with even the wrongdoer. So be careful, sisters. Not because somebody gave you a gift, you believe whatever he says. That's the mistake many of us do. When somebody is generous to you, whatever they say, you're going to sympathize with them. No, I hear you and I want to hear the other one. So he looked at his bishops, the king now. The bishops immediately agreed, uh, send them, send them, let their people judge them. He said, no, I need to hear them first. That shows he was a good king. That shows the Prophet ﷺ was right by sending them there. You don't even hear the other side of the story and you want to believe? What's wrong with you? A mother, mother, by nature, she sees her son coming and crying. What does she do? From school, your son is coming. Ma, ma, what do you do? Who hit you? What happened, right? Okay, good. Find out. The other boy, he hit me. He did this. You go and hit the boy or say what happened first. Hear that boy. Maybe your son now needs Sheikh Zubayz Rotan. Maybe your son deserves even more beating of you because he did something worse. And that boy was just nice by pushing him back. Find out first. If your son has been wrong, Yes, but if your son is the wrongdoer, what do you do? You have to find out. So the king was very rational, very logical, very fair. Exactly as Rasulullah thought of him. So she further narrates, who is she? Who is this lady who is telling the story? Ummu Salama, who will become the wife of Rasulullah later on. She's still married with Abu Salama. May Allah be pleased with him. Abu Salama and Ummu Salama went hijrah to Abyssinia. She's narrating the story. Abu Salama will die in the battle of Badr and the Prophet ﷺ will propose to her to be his wife after four months and 10 days. You got it? Continue. She further narrated, Najashi was quite angry at this suggestion and said, no, by Allah, I won't surrender them to both of you. I will not support any intrigue against a people who sought my land, chose as refuge my kingdom above others, at least not until I myself call them and question them about what these two people have accused of them. If what these two, two men have said is true, then I will hand them over to them. If, however, it is not so, then I shall protect them so long as they desire to remain under my protection. She continued, Najashi then sent for the com companions of the Allah's messenger to, the pres to present themselves at the court of the king. Show me a king today that is like this. May Allah be pleased with Najashi. He became Muslim. 
he was good subhanallah some good people before islam they are good and islam just like a crown you put on their heads huh some people already ethical he said no i will not return people who came to my land seeking my protection before i hear them fair i want to hear them first who among kings today can hear you they don't even have time hear me man you you're going to send me back where they're going to persecute me what dignity you have i sought your protection i came to your house i came to your land listen to me at least give me the five minutes to talk to you five minutes you don't have uh, see now why najashi always a good king until the day of judgment people like sheikh zubair will talk about najashi and people like you mashallah will hear about najash because he was a good man continue my sister jafar presents islam when they arrived at the court najashi asked them what is this new religion with which you have divided your own people and has prevented you from embracing my religion or any known of any other known religions the spokesman for the muslims was none other than jafar bin abi talib so he responded to the king as thus o king you were a people in a state of ignorance and immorality immorality worshiping idols and eating the flesh of dead animals committing all sorts of abomination and shameful deeds breaking the ties of kinship treating guests badly and the strong among us exploited the weak we remained in this state until allah sent us a messenger one of our own people whose lineage truthfulness trustworthiness and integrity integrity were well were well known to us he called us to worship allah alone and to renounce the stones and the idols with which we and our ancestors used to worship besides allah he commanded us to speak the truth to honor our promises to be kind to our relations to be helpful to our neighbors to seize all forbidden acts to abstain from bloodshed and to avoid obscenities and false witness not to appropriate and of orphans poverty nor slander chast women he ordered us to worship allah alone and not to associate anything with him to uphold salah to give zakat and to fast in the month of ramadan she said and he recounted some of the precepts of islam he continued we believed in him and what he brought to us from allah and we follow him in what he has asked us to do and we keep away from what he forbade us from doing thereupon o king our people attacked us placed the severest punishment on us to make us renounce our religion and take us back to the old immorality and the wish and the worship of idols they oppressed us made life intolerable for us and obstructed us from observing our religion so we left for your country choosing you before anyone else desiring your protection and hoping to live in justice and in peace in your midst najashi was impressed with the speech of jafar and he asked him do you have with you something of what your prophet brought concerning god yes replied jafar then he read it to me requested me then read it to me requested najashi Jafar in his rich melodious voice recited to him for the first portion of surah maryam which deals with the story of jesus and his mother mary on hearing the words of the quran najashi was moved to tears until his beard became wet his bishops also wept until their books became wet with their tears when they heard what was read to them to the muslims he said the message of your prophet and that of jesus came with the same source to amar and his companion he said go for by allah i will never surrender surrender them to you i continue shay yes okay. i'm enjoying the story okay when they went out of the queen's court amar bin al as said by allah i will return to him tomorrow with something that will enrage him against them abdul abdullah bin abi rabia who was more lenient said don't do that they still share this with us kinship even though they have some differences with us but ama was insistently said insistently i will inform them that they claim that isa the son of mary is a slave of allah the next day ama went to najashi as planned and said o king 
these people to whom you have given refuge and whom you protect say something terrible about Jesus and the son of Mary, that is that he is a slave. Send for them and ask them for what they say about him. About him. Najashi summoned the Muslims once more. Once again, before they went, the Muslims consulted with each other. What would you say if they ask you about Isa, the son of Mary? A group amongst them said, we would tell them that Allah has said and what our Prophet has brought, up, has brought for us whatever happens. When they eventually arrived at the court of the king, he asked them, what do you say about Isa, the son of Mary? Ja'far bin Abi Tabli once again replied, regarding him, we only say what has been revealed to our Prophet. He said, he, Isa, is the servant of Allah and his messenger, his spirit and his word, which he cast unto Mary the Virgin. Now Jashi hit his hand on the floor in obvious excitement at the reply of Ja'far. He picked up the small stick and said, by Allah, Isa, the son of Mary, as was no less than what you have said by the width of this stick. The bishops around me just grunted in disgust at what they had heard, and the king stopped in his tracks, turned to him and reprimanded him. He turned to the Muslims and said, go for you, for you are safe and secure. Whoever obstructs you will pay for it, and whoever opposes you will be punished. For by Allah, I would rather not have a mountain of gold than that of any one of you should come that any one of you should should come to any harm. Turning to Amr and his companion, he instructed his attendants, Return their gifts to these men. I have no need of them. By Allah, Allah did not take any bribe from me before he restored my authority. So how should I take a bribe? She concluded, both them, Amr and his companion, left broken and disappointed, as all they had brought was returned to them. He re we remained in the land of Najashi, benefiting from his generosity and kindness, until we came back to the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, while he was still in Mecca. Author's words, this is how a caller to the path of Allah ought to be, presenting Islam excellently and effectively, exuding good manners in debate. Islam is no less need of such blessed followers today. Mm. How many times do we hear speech givers about Islam that we wished they had kept quiet without saying a word? Most of them having no understanding of the deen as Allah has revealed it. A few of them who understand the issues of the deen lack befitting and acceptable manners of presenting the truth. All of these are in an age when even the most worthless matter is beautified in men until they, became, they become acceptable. A man who is an enemy of what he does not know. What deficiency is greater than the Muslims today do not explain their deen clearly, accurately, and appropriately. An elucidation bereft of any ambiguity and impairment. An elucidation which the singular goal of making the truth manifest. I continue, Shay? Yes, two more paragraphs and we stop. Okay. The new generations are in dire need of learning Islam with a humble and gentle language and arguments and proofs that are plausible, filling the emptiness of a remarkable mind and refuting the doubts created by agents of atheism and destruction after the last colonial invasion of our lands. From the rights of Islam upon its adherence is to confront the world with what they possess of eternal treasure. Yes, with us is a book whose resonance will not fade and whose fortune shall not end. With us is a prophethood, whose force is inspired and whose way of life is immaculate. The emigrants left Abyssinia and returned to Mecca, but Jaffa remained until the year of the conquest of Taibar. The Prophet ﷺ was quite pleased with his return. Ash-Shabi said, when Allah's messenger returned from Taibar, Jaffa met him, he embraced him and kissed him in between his eyes. He said, I do not know which fills me with more happiness, the conquest of Haiba or the coming of Jaffa. Allah Such a Allah beautiful Allah. story. Allah Allah. Allah. Uh, when when, when Jaffa returned to, when he reunited with his cousin and leader and Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam kissed him between his forehead, between his two eyes. And he told them, I'm not really I really don't know what makes me more happy. The conquest of Khaybar and kicking the Jews out of 
Medina or the coming of Jafar? And he said it beautiful, look at me. Is it Khaybar or Jafar? That makes me happy, Khaybar, Jafar. So is it the coming back of Jafar back to us in reunion? Or is it the defeat of the Jews in Khaybar? That really makes me more <coughs> pleased. The Prophet Asim was, of course, pleased with both of them. He was just questioning which one is more, because he loved his cousin very much. And his cousin sacrificed a lot. So that's the story of Jafar, half of it. Next week, inshallah, we finish the beautiful story of Jafar and start with another great Sahabi who was very brave and very unique. His name is Abu Dhar al Ghifari, radiallahu anhu. Ah, sounds familiar, Sister Fatma? Abu Dhar. We learn more about Abu Dhar al Ghifari. This unique Sahabi, he was unique. No one was like him. We will talk about him next time. But remember now, who is the Sahabi we are talking about today? Jafar bin Abi Talib. And we talked about Mus'ab bin Umayr. May Allah increase us in knowledge, in admiring the Sahaba of Rasulullah Sallallahu And all of these die shaheed so far. All the Sahaba we have seen so far, from Umar, Uthman, Ali, and Tinna. They die shaheed, martyrs. Allahu Akbar. Yes. This is why the author put them first. Up to now. Wow. They died shaheed. They gave the ultimate price. They paid it with their own lives. You and me, we are just saying, come to class. What is this? Sisters, there is something called, when you go out to the sun, there is a vitamin called D. And D, it touches you, gives you, and the sun. Huh? You know that. رَبَّنَا أَتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَةً وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنَةً وَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ Ya Allah, increase our iman, increase our taqwa. Make us see Mus'ab bin Umair and Ja'far bin Abi Talib in Jannah. Amin, Ya Rab. Forgive us, Ya Allah. Forgive our brothers and sisters. Anyone who is making dua for us, may you, Ya Rab, accept their duas and give them the best. Ya Rab. Forgive us, forgive our mothers, our fathers, our spouses, our children, all our loved ones, our teachers, our students who passed away. Amin, amin. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun. Salamun al-Mursaleen. Alhamdulillah. Assalamu alaikum.